When I was in high school, I played a game called Magic the Gathering. I didn't have a lot of friends and I was terribly lonely, but Magic the Gathering gave me a connection to others, if only for an hour during recess and lunch. During the rest of my time, I would pour through my magic collection like pouring through the pages of a spell book, studying the cards, not just what they did, but also their artwork and flavor text. In the flavor text of those cards, I found snippets of information about a character named Urza and an epic war he fought against his brother Mishra. I became enamored and obsessed with any text about Urza, Mishra, or the brothers' war. It was as though these little flavor texts had been written just for me, to find and connect and piece together like a puzzle hidden in the pages of an ancient tome. Suffice it to say, Urza has always been one of my favorite characters, and certainly he was my first favorite, previously only available disguised as the Blind Seer, a rather lackluster legendary, Urza has been given a card in Modern Horizons, and it is without a doubt one of the most powerful commanders for EDH, but also, for me, a powerful pull to those first few days of Magic the Gathering. Here's how to build him. In the greatest understatement of Magic the Gathering ever, Urza is a legendary human artificer. Yes, he is, that is putting it lightly. For two generic and two blue, when Urza, Lord High Artificer, enters the battlefield, create a 0, zero colorless con construct artifact creature token with this creature gets plus one plus one for each artifact you control. I have found many Magic the Gathering players focusing too strongly on this enters the battlefield effect, focusing deck design on artifacts when the real power is Urza's next ability. Tap an untapped artifact you control. Add blue. Hoo hoo. Believe it or not, of the three, this is the real power of Urza. And no, that power isn't just ramp. I'll cover it in just a moment, but Urza has a third ability as well. For five generic mana, shuffle your library, then exile the top card. Until end of turn, you may play that card without paying its mana cost. So how to build for Urza? The key pieces of this deck are Static Orb and Winter Orb, which to me puts Urza in the realm of overpowered evil commanders that has not been seen since the days of Leovold Legality. Winter Orb is an artifact for two generic mana that reads, as long as Winter Orb is untapped, players can't untap more than one land during their untapped steps. And Static Orb is an artifact for three generic mana that reads, as long as Static Orb is untapped, players can't untap more than two permanents during their untapped steps. The beauty of Urza is that he's able to flip these artifacts off during your own untapped step, meaning that if Urza is in play, both Static Orb and Winter Orb might as well only affect your opponents and not you. Along these lines, you can also run Trinisphere to make the cost of any spells that would cost less than three mana to play cost three mana to play, as well as storage matrix as a redundancy and also just to really shut things down for our opponents. Remember, Urza will be turning each of these cards off for ourselves and only leaving them on for our opponents. With these orbs on the battlefield alongside Urza, our opponent's ability to do, well, anything is pretty much turned off, leaving us free to win the game in a number of ways, including old-fashioned creature damage. Along those same lines, we can run Howling Mine and then just use Urza to shut it off for our opponents. Urza makes Howling Mind might as well read, during your upkeep, draw an extra card. What's more is the fact this ability essentially turns zero-cost artifacts into mock sapphires. Ever wanted to run a commander deck so broken it allowed you to, oh, I don't know, run about five mock sapphires? Then Urza is for you. Our ratio of mana sources to spells should be about 46 mana sources. Now normally we'd only want about 8 accelerants like mana rocks, but since we're playing with moxes as well as any artifact we run being able to be tapped for one blue mana, we don't even have to worry about mana rocks and we can really ramp into mana just with regular artifacts and have an extreme amount of acceleration. As far as zero cost artifacts are concerned, I definitely choose ones that give a bonus effect. Artifacts like spellbooks so we have no maximum hand size, Welding Jar can sacrifice in a pinch to regenerate a creature, Fountain of Youth for life gain, and Darksteel Relic simply because it is indestructible. Remember that one and two drop artifacts with abilities will also tap for mana. And to go along with the misery of our winter and static orbs, we want to run artifacts which shut down our opponents as best we can. That's why we run Graft Digger's Cage to shut down graveyard strategies, and Sorceress Spyglass and Pithing Needle for specific threats. 
Remember that Urza turns these into mana rocks as well, tapping for one blue mana. I know I've already said that, but I can't get over how powerful it is. I feel like I have to remind you, this is real, this is real. Turning to Urza's third ability, Paradox Engine plus Urza means you can tap five artifacts. And remember, Paradox Engine is an artifact, so you only need four additional artifacts in play, and then use Urza's ability, play the top card of your library without paying its mana cost, then Paradox Engine untaps those artifacts, allowing you to repeat as many times as you like. For the sake of redundancy, one of my favorite cards in Magic, Isochron Scepter, plus Dramatic Reversal means that if we have two mana available, just from lands or other mana rocks, that we can use Urza's third ability to our own delight. What are some of the horrible things we're looking for? Well, it being nearly $70 each right now, I just can't bring myself to recommend Blightsteel Colossus. Though I do love it as a way to win games, but no, that's just not on this list, not officially anyway. It's in my actual deck because, well, I'm a monster. But I will include the delicious combo of Narset, Parter of Veils, and Teferi's Puzzle Box, going old school Leovold on our opponents, as well as Windfall and Jace's Archivist, in case we can't get to the box. There's a ton of artifacts in play in this deck, many I haven't gotten to yet, so Urza creating those construct tokens with his enter the battlefield effect can be our win con once our opponents are shut down. Bringing him into play from the command zone nets us one token, but soul bonding Urza with Deadeye Navigator means we can flicker him for as much mana as we have available, which, surprise, is quite a lot. Conjurer's Closet is not as broken, but it does let us flicker Urza once each end step helping us if we are still putting our master plan into play. We also run Karn, Scion of Urza, to create the exact same construct tokens as Urza with his negative two loyalty ability. Besides Urza's construct tokens, we run the classic Worm Coil Engine, a fantastic threat, easy for us to bring out and hard for our opponents to deal with. And if you're looking towards this deck's win cons, Memnarch is another target, a possible win situation where we can essentially take control of some of, if not all of, the relevant cards in play play given enough mana, which again this deck easily has. We're in mono blue, so the deck runs back to basics, thankfully more affordable since its recent reprint, and delightfully punishing most, likely, most of, if not the rest of the table. But we're not just mono blue. You see, Urza caused the Ice Age, and so it is on flavor for this deck to make use of the extra planner lens and snow basic land trick. Snow covered islands, oh yes. For those unfamiliar Familiar, when Extra Planner Lens enters the battlefield, you may exile target land you control. Whenever a land with the same name as the exiled card is tapped for mana, its controller adds one mana of any type that land produced. Snow-covered islands are considered basic lands, which you can run multiple copies of in your deck. They are also highly, highly unlikely to be run in large number, if at all, by our opponents. That means we can create a situation where all our basic lands essentially tap for double blue. Tutors are critical to get the tools we need when and how we need them. The deck runs Trinket Mage, Tribute Mage, and Trophy Mage to grab artifacts of 1, 2, and 3 mana, be they orbs or that extra planner lens. Fabricate lets us search for whatever artifact we want and place it in our hand. But the best tutor of all is Arkham Dagson, who lets us sacrifice an artifact to go tutor up any other artifact from our deck and put it into play. Fantastic for turning a Memnite or Ornithopter, hey, those are essentially Moxes in this deck too, into a Paradox Engine or into whatever expensive buried artifact we need. Master Transmuter won't tutor an artifact, but if we are somehow short on mana, she can tap to return that Phyrexian Revoker to place an expensive Darksteel Forge into play. Also, this ability is nice for resetting cards like Revoker and Pithing Needle. Vidalkin Archmage and Riddlesmith draw us a card each time we cast an artifact and Padim gives all artifacts hexproof as well as potentially drawing us a card each upkeep. Hexproof artifacts pair nicely with Darksteel Forge, which makes all artifacts indestructible, all of this working towards keeping our opponents from shutting down our grand machinations. If they do manage to destroy a key creation, cards like Buried Rune, Mirror Retriever, Scrap Trawler, and the very on flavor Academy Runes gets it back. Chief Engineer, Ethereum Sculptor, and Foundry Inspector all reduce the cost of our artifact spells. 
Wells. While a favorite of mine from the M12 days, Grand Architect, lets us tap a blue creature for two generic to be spent only on artifacts. The fact he is a blue lord and can make target artifact blue is just blue icing on our artifact cake. You can tweak your control and removal suite any way you like, but I like running Arcane Denial, Counterspell, Swan Song, Reality Shift, and of course, Cyclonic Rift. If you want to go the route of Force of Will and Mana Drain, knock yourself out. Finally, Training Grounds reduces Urza's third ability from five to three, accelerating an already fast and competitive commander. But this is just one way to build Urza. As a commander, Urza is both powerful but flexible in approach, but this is just one way to build Urza. Don't be afraid to look at other lists and suggestions, my favorite spot being the fantastic EDH Rec website for ideas about Urza or any other commander for that matter. Don't be afraid to experiment. As Urza himself would say, you can build a perfect machine out of imperfect parts. Now, I hope very much this video has been of some help to you. What commander would you like to see a deck tech on next? Let me know in the comments below. And remember, you can help me out quite a lot by remembering to subscribe, by sharing this video with a friend, by hitting that like button, by ringing that bell, or just by leaving that comment. Every time you share a video like this or others with your friends, you are helping Talarian Community College keep going and growing strong. So thank you. And this video was brought to you by Card Kingdom, where now any pre-order of $25 or greater that includes at least one Modern Horizons sealed product will receive a special edition sticker sheet featuring six of the most popular modern archetypes.